All right, welcome in my instant reaction to the Eagles' domination of the San Francisco 49ers. Um, yeah, I was sitting watching this game in the third quarter. And this is the time of the year when you get a lot of Aaron Rodgers to the Jets and Tom Brady to the Raiders. And, you know, you get a lot of rumors. And by and large, most of the time, players stay put, right? Change is hard for all of us. Kyle Shanahan's thinking, I started the year with Trey Lance, hurt. Then I got Garoppolo, hurt. Brock Purdy, hurt. Josh Johnson, hurt. I'm now using Christian McCaffrey and the Wildcat. And I'm thinking, that's where Tom Brady's probably texting Kyle. I don't get hurt. That's where rumors come from, right? You look at Kyle Shanahan. I'm sitting there. Game's over now, and I'm thinking, you know, I thought if Brock Purdy played pretty well, even if he lost, you bring it back. But this is now availability is a skill. Brett Favre, Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, it's a skill. And, you know, quarterbacks throughout the league have gotten a little smaller, athletic. They move more. There's more injuries. But, um, you know, years ago, the NFL decided nobody needed a third quarterback. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll go back to using some common sense that what you don't want is running backs taking the wildcat in playoff games, potentially. These are big, strong guys. Quarterbacks, you know, are often smaller guys. But if you're Kyle Shanahan, you'd be willing to give up one of your linebackers to inherit Tom Brady and his history, his record of staying healthy. I mean, I look down in my sheet. I take notes for these games. I'll take copious notes. My first note today, Fred Warner hurt, followed by Brock Purdy fumble hurt. There's a Bosa hurt. Josh Johnson enters concussion protocol. You know, at some point, Kyle Shanahan's putting his hands in the air. Um, San Francisco, even with a Brady, a Derek Carr, whoever, fill in the blank, uh, can maintain a majority of this roster. It doesn't have a lot of holes. And I thought they really played about as well as you can play, considering they didn't get officiating breaks, um, the injuries, you know. When it was when it was fourteen seven, I thought you know, I don't even I don't even know. It's like landing a plane with no wings. It was a miraculous fourteen to seven deficit. Let's talk Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts is not hundred percent, and I think you can see it. I'm sure most of you noticed this. A lot of his throws were low today. Uh, it just didn't have the push. Um, you're not going to get away with that against Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes, whoever he faces. So um, especially that. That Bengals defense. Um, so hopefully in two weeks he can get healthier. Um, I said this. I liked Philadelphia to win this game, although it was a weird the way it transpired. But they've got eight Pro Bowl starters, nine reserves, seventeen elite players, and they really play to their strengths. You know the offense. Uh, they take a few shots downfield, a few. But it's their offensive line, which PFF has graded as the number one offensive line in football. They grind it out. They lean downhill. Uh, a lot of different sets and motions. They keep you kind of guessing, but you sort of know what they're going to do. A lot of tight end stuff. Um, you know, Jalen Hurts did not use his legs very much at all in the first half and sparingly in the second. But, I mean, this Eagles team, um, they were the last team in the league to lose a game. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you win the Super Bowl or get to the Super Bowl if you look at history. But it's a stacked roster. You know, I kind of felt like going into the game, the roster, Howie Roseman gets credit for that. Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts gets credit for that. Um, let's see what Nick Sirianni can do. And one of the things I appreciate about him is he knows what they are. He leans into it. I, I really love what they do. It's so simplistic. But when they use Jason Kelsey on the third and one or fourth and ones, <laughs> and they just, I mean, they just, they go right over the best center in the NFL. 
Know what you are. Do what you do. Don't outthink the room. And Philadelphia doesn't. Uh, they'll be the most talented team in the Super Bowl. Uh, they have a better overall roster than the Bengals. If they get in, Bengals' corners are suboptimal. Uh, they've got a better overall roster than uh, Phil uh, Kansas City. Again, their back end is okay, not great. So Philadelphia will enter as the most talented team in the Super Bowl. I think they match up actually better with Kansas City. Um, I just think uh, when Joe Burrow gets humming situationally, they can keep extending those drives, extending those drives. Short, precise passing game could frustrate Philadelphia a little bit. Um, but they'll, they'll match up fine. Uh, you know, it's a classic Philadelphia team. It's all rocky. Uh, Nick Sirianni butchers his opening press conference. Uh, people doubt him. He makes fun of it. Jalen Hurts, everybody doubted. Um, it's classic. They, they, they have two things going for them. They're super talented, and they play like an underdog. They play with a chip on their shoulder. And uh, this was also an advertisement for anybody in the National Football League considering taking conference championships to a neutral site. How about we start with no? <laughs> if you're watching that Philadelphia crowd, they earned that home field advantage. You don't take that away from fans. Come on. The Super Bowl is already a corporate event. Okay, don't, don't take it away from fans. Don't, don't do that. I mean, economically, you're asking fans, and, and college football does this, you know, you're asking fans to spend th tens of thousands of dollars sometimes to take their family on the road. What makes sports great, the, the ambiance. It's like going to an empty bar, right? That Everybody wants to walk into a bar where there's people there. There's a great ambiance to it. The crowd's the ambiance. Philadelphia was rocking. They earned it. It was fantastic. Let's let's get this nonsense uh, out of the potential for uh, you know neutral sites for NFL games. I'm not interested. I'm I'm just now coming to grips with games in Germany. They're adorable. I don't want multiple games there. So Philadelphia, congratulations. We kind of felt I felt going into the game. And the reason I like Philadelphia, two great rosters. I feel like the AFC is about quarterbacks, Chiefs, Bengals. The NFC was about rosters. I thought it was just asking Brock Purdy to overcome too much. At Philly, second most experienced quarterback in the game. I thought he would face more pressure because the Eagles had a better offensive line. Um, just too much. And then you, you throw in the injury. Uh, this is the outcome. I, I never really felt, even early on, um, when they tied it at seven, and there was a brief moment, I thought, San Francisco somehow, after that Christian McCaffrey run where he banged off four guys, I thought, you know, this is, this is a coaching victory if they can keep it close. But, um, you know, nobody's going to like that Devontae Smith catch down the sidelines, but it's on the 49ers to throw the flag and challenge it. Okay, referees miss stuff. That's why they have challenges. All right, they didn't get touched down a play later, play two plays later, whatever it was. That's the breaks. That's sports. All right, instant reaction. Congrats to the Eagles, Niners. Quarterback position heading into the offseason remains an enigma. <laughs> it's been like three years. I still don't know what they're going to do at quarterback. 